up, guys? We're back with a very big and opinionated topic today. This is my third and final video in the series on my most frequently asked questions. And listen, guys, this is it. Okay, this is the video, how to conceal carry. There are so many misconceptions and opinions and staunch beliefs out there, but I'm gonna try to make this really, really simple for you by asking you one question. In the unlikely but extremely serious event that you have to draw and fire your, your gun that day, what is it that sets you up for success? So that's what this is about. You know, on the surface, this question seems like it's about what gun to carry or what clothes to wear or even where to wear your gun, but it's not, okay? It's about setting up for success in case your entire life is altered because of a potentially very, very bad day. Now, before we get into like all the nitty gritty things, the, the fine details like what clothes to wear or where to wear it on your body or printing or anything like that, let's address some myths about concealed carrying. Okay, the first myth, the smaller the better. Smaller guns are easier to shoot and easier to hide, so clearly that's the right choice for concealed carry, right? No. We already addressed this a little bit in the first video about what gun to buy, but let's talk about it a little bit more today. So smaller guns have a few limiting factors, right? First, they have a really, really big recoil. So this is a simple physics lesson, basically. You know, a, a big bang is tolerated by more mass. So a small gun plus a big bang equals a big recoil. A bigger gun, which has more mass with it, with a big bang has less recoil. So you can test this theory out if you take a small person and have them shoot a small gun next to a big person shooting the same small gun. Like for instance, when my husband and I go shoot, his body barely moves. <laughs> when I shoot, it doesn't matter how well I have a hold of that gun, my body moves with that recoil. You know, small guns means you have to learn how to handle the bigger recoil. So is that the gun that you wanna take out with you? You know, I hear women all the time say they want a smaller gun that'll fit in their hands better. You know, they think they're gonna be able to shoot that better. They're gonna be able to carry it around better because it's not as big and clunky, but they have no idea what that recoil is gonna feel like. Ladies, there's a joke in here somewhere, I think, about if size matters, <laughs> and yes, it does. Size matters, okay? A bigger gun is most likely the right answer for you. Now, if you're a really experienced shooter, this may not matter that much to you. Depending on the day, I can be more accurate with my little pocket Glock, the Glock 43, than I am with the bigger, you know, compact gun, the Glock 19. So, they, they shoot the same caliber, but, and I've shot these guns many, many times, but that Glock 43 is mean, y'all. If you are not experienced with rapid fire and a small gun like that, I just, I don't recommend carrying it because look, again, really what we're talking about here is if I need to use my gun, what sets me up for success? So a small gun with six rounds and a huge recoil that you're, you know, you rarely shoot and you only take it out for concealed carry, you're not super comfortable with it, or a slightly larger gun that you can still conceal which I'll show you how to do that, you know, with less recoil that you shoot in classes and competitions and you've taken apart and you really know how it works. I don't know, I mean, you answer that question for yourself. For me, it's the bigger gun. Now, the second myth, <sighs> carry with an empty, empty chamber. <sighs> Again, guys, please, let's set ourselves up for success. <laughs> if you had to pull your gun and use it, do you wanna have it ready so that you can shoot it immediately as it's drawn, maybe even like from your hip if you need to? Or do you wanna to have to use both hands to charge it? You know, an unchambered gun is a dead man's gun. It's just that simple. Ladies, if you're in a situation where you're say like you're carrying in groceries or you've got your kid's sports equipment in your hand or God forbid you are having to fight someone off with your hands, do you want to have to chamber your gun or do you want it already chambered? So, you need both hands free and clear for that, you know? And then you have to get a grip on your gun, then you have to draw it, then you have to get to it here and chamber it and then pull the trigger. You know, have you ever seen those videos of people that like don't drop their coffee when they get startled by something or like somebody jumps around the corner at them and they just like freak out with their coffee in their hand? You may not drop what's in your hand at the same time. So, okay, story time. I've been in this situation. This was before I started carrying regularly when I was in college. Um, I was a shooter at the time, but you know, very inconsistently because of school and work, it just took up all of my time. So I was assaulted in my apartment complex and I had to use both my hands in order to fight the attacker off. I had a big old thing of laundry in my hand that I had to drop. Um, now, had I needed to get to my gun, 
that wasn't on me, all I would have needed to do is grab hold of it, like one-handed over my clothing, while I use my left hand to put some space between us, right? Punching, poking, gouging, pushing, any of that kind of stuff. That's what I was doing. Pull my gun, drop my elbow, and fire through my shirt. Now, I can hear you know it's not going to cycle immediately, but that would have put some space between he and I, right? Then I could have cleared it from my clothing. Tap, rack, bang, bang, bang. So think about that. Now, third myth. I can't carry without a belt. Well, I kind of solved this problem for you in the video on holsters. You just don't need a belt anymore. There are plenty of holsters out there that are made for beltless carry. Like the one that I carry, the Intrepid, made by Eclipse. You, you just, you don't need a belt for it, okay? It clips on to leggings, even to jeans, whatever, it, and it stays in place. I only wear belts like at competitions or classes or whatever, um, and I carry all the time. I don't need a belt. So that, that, that ulti clip that's on there stays in place and you can draw your gun aggressively and it's not gonna come off your pants, okay? Now, fourth thing, pocket or purse carry will be just fine. No, it won't be, <laughs> okay? Try a few things out. Put your phone in your pocket or your purse even or whatever. Um, you can even do it with an unloaded gun. Just make sure you've checked it, you know, two or three times for safety. And now find a target and run towards it. Or better, have somebody run towards you. Try to get your phone out. Now, think about how hard it is to find your phone in your purse anyways. Multiply that by like 1,000 when your adrenaline is coursing through your ears to your two working brain cells and your heart rate is like up to 180. Then say by some chance you actually managed to find your gun in your purse in time. Is it chambered? Like seriously, like, walk through this. Try it in your room one night and see how smoothly you can do it. I bet you will not be happy with the outcome, okay? You can even clock it, time it, and see how long it takes. Okay, so now that we have some of these things out of the way, let's look at how I actually conceal carry, what that looks like on me. Like where I carry my gun on my body, you know, what if I can't carry my gun on my body, and what kind of clothes I use in order to do this successfully. All right, let's start nice and easy. Jeans and a sweater. <laughs> Done, so easy to conceal, very minimal printing, easy access to your weapon where you can get a good natural grip on your gun, no issues here, right? Something tells me that this is too easy and not while you're watching the video in the first place. But since we're here, let's go ahead and talk about printing. I do not get very concerned with printing. Now, can you see this some? Sure, do you know what it is? Maybe, but if you know what it is, it's because you also carry guns. Those are not the people that care, right? They see that and they're like, oh cool, she's carrying a gun. I feel safer here, <laughs> whatever. Um, I just don't get too worried about printing. It, it's not gonna cause an issue. I've never been out somewhere where I felt like, oh no, I'm like my gun is showing and people are, are concerned about it. Um, it. If that's what's happening, then you just need to figure out you know, another layer or something to put on. So printing, I, I just don't get very excited about it. Um, it's never been an issue and I'm not, you know, like, full showing my firearm when I'm out. So uh, if you're printing a little bit, just chill. It's going to be okay, I promise. Okay, next outfit. Here we are with leggings and a t-shirt. This is basically a mom's uniform these days, right? It's hard to go anywhere without seeing a woman in leggings and a t-shirt. Um, how many of them do you think are concealed carrying? My guess is probably not many. Even the ones that want to or can don't really know how to. So this is what I do, okay? These are just like some standard leggings. They're not really even that high-waisted. Um, and I, for this, since you can see it a little bit more, I kind of move, uh, I kind of move my holster a little bit farther to the back. Um, you know, it, 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 it keeps the gun more into um, this curve of my back and my hip, and I just think you don't see it as much. But again, it's just not that, it's just not that showy. And again, if someone sees this, then they're probably a gun person too, so I'm not worried about them. Um, but this is uh, the ulti clip, again, um, that you don't need a belt for, and you can still get a good clean draw from your weapon, and it does not come off. Does it move around? Yes, but that's because you're wearing leggings. So if you don't like that, then you need to wear jeans all the time. <laughs> um, but I wear leggings a lot, and this is, the, this is exactly how I wear it. It's just like this. Okay, let's get a little bit more complicated. So same leggings, tighter fitting t-shirt. Um, this is where it becomes a little bit more difficult with my Glock 19. Can it be done still? Yes, 
If I was wearing this though, I would probably add an extra layer on top just for my own comfort and not feeling I have to keep checking my, my shirt. Um, can you see it? Maybe, yeah, you can see it a little bit, but it's not super noticeable, right? Um, it's not like neon flashing signs. So what I would do in this case, I'd move my gun a little bit farther around to the back where it's a little bit less noticeable, and then I'd put on a jean jacket. Now, anytime you do this, you need to practice this, right? Because now you've added an extra layer, something else that you're gonna have to um, clear in order to get to your gun. So all it takes is a tiny little bit of adrenaline to lose your fine motor skills. You know, that adrenaline is going more towards your gross motor skills, like running and getting the heck out of there, um, and, and away from those more precise fine movements that you need in your fingers and like to clear, you know, your jacket. So. This is something that you would want to practice um, before you left the house like this. Now, what if you don't want to wear a jacket because it's hot outside or because you like your cute little t-shirt showing? Well, then you have two options. Uh, the first recommendation I would have is moving to a smaller gun. So moving to a smaller gun that's not going to stick out quite as heavily, um, I would recommend over taking off body, like into a cross body, which is what we'll look at here in a minute. Uh, because again, you can access your weapon, it's on your body. You don't have to, to get through something else. So, you know, this is the Glock 43 on, um, on my waist here with a tighter fitting t-shirt. Now I have gone out in crowds like this before around people that I know well, uh, someone that, you know, would not be upset seeing a gun on my waist. And I've asked them, hey, have you noticed that I'm wearing a gun? And they're like, what, you have a gun on right now? And my, my response is always very sarcastically, if you see me, I'm wearing a gun, okay? If I'm out in public, I have a gun on me. Now, can you see it? And they were like, absolutely not, where is it? And I just did one of these, and they still did not find the gun on me. So people that aren't wearing guns themselves, they're, they're just not seeing that stuff. So I, I just, I don't get too extremely worried about that. Now, if this still makes you uncomfortable, you're wearing a cute little t-shirt and some tight leggings, and you're worried somebody's gonna see it and be upset with you, then, Crossbody would be my next, um, that would be my next suggestion. Okay, now when I wear a crossbody, I do not leave it in a holster because again, already you've got it a crossbody. You have to unzip, you have to get it out, then you have to take your holster. Like it's just, it's a lot, okay? So I don't, I, I keep mine unchambered, which is not my typical um, suggestion, okay? but I will make sure that it is cleared. I will put it in my crossbody, zip this sucker up, sometimes halfway, and then you can throw this bad boy on like this. And this at least is still close to you. Um, you know, again, now you've got it here. If you needed to get to it quickly and somebody was up on you, you're gonna have a harder time doing that. So this is the lowest on my list of how I can seal carry. Um, yeah. That's what it looks like. Uh, I do carry like this sometimes because it's just the only way that I can. But uh, if you needed to get to it, you need to practice, right? So you need to take the time. Again, I would tap it, rack it, tap it, because after, if you're pulling it out of something like this, you don't know if your magazine release has been activated a little bit. Like this right here, the magazine is staying in, but it is not, look, it is not actually locked in place. So if you're pulling from something like this, you tap it, you rack it, and then bang, okay? That is crossbody. All right, so what about crop tops? Um, you know, I love shorter shirts, they're comfortable, they're cute, and they're kind of everywhere right now, so can you conceal carry in this? Yes, you can. The option for this is to carry for your, on your upper abdomen like this, okay? So there are a few holsters that will let you do this. Uh, this is another one by Eclipse, and I'm using a belt by Comfort Concealment. Uh, this is a nice soft belt. It's got Velcro around it to keep it in place. Um, and you know, I really kind of like it. It's got multiple uses for it. Another holster option that I've not personally tried, but I've heard is really great is um, a holster by Crossbreed. So theirs is like leather up against your skin. It's a hard shell outside um, and it lays very flat. This one is a little bit bulky and you know, I mean, I don't believe it was really meant for this purpose. It's just how I'm using it and it works, it works fine. Now, of course, I have a couple of issues with carrying this way. One, as you can imagine, is you are gonna run into having to clear your clothing in order to draw your weapon. 
step in. So you always need two hands for this. I, I, this is just, that's not gonna work, okay? So for this, you're gonna need to practice this, clearing with both of your hands. Now, if I'm at the grocery store, walking around carrying all my kids' stuff, you know, this is not the way that I'm gonna carry. But if I'm out somewhere and I'm in a, you know, a short shirt like this, and um, I know I don't have a whole lot of stuff in my hands, I, this is a possibility. I would prefer other ways, but this is an option. Now, of course, the other thing about this, sitting in the car or sitting at a desk or something, it just it eventually becomes kind of uncomfortable. So not my favorite way to carry, but it is an option um, if you need to carry up higher on your body. Okay, now we're in a dress. How do we do this? Clearly an outfit like this is not very conducive for carrying something on your waistband. I can't put anything in your pocket if you were gonna try to do that. So what do we do in this case? Super easy answer here. Thigh holster. <laughs> Okay, this is a thigh holster from Can Can Concealment, and I actually use this quite a bit. This is, you know, how I church in Texas, okay? So this holster is really cool. You've got this thigh portion here. It comes with the garter straps on it and then a garter belt. So if your gun gets heavy, you know, whatever, something's happening uh, and this starts going down, it's gonna stay in place because of that garter belt. Now I carry on the inside of my thigh here uh, because obviously if I carried this gun on the out, this little outside pocket that it has here for you, um, that you can put a gun or you can put a, um, a magazine or something like that or a, a knife, whatever you want in here, then uh, you would be able to see that sitting outside. So I carry right here. This is super comfortable. It does not bother me at all. It is not invading my space, if you understand what I'm saying. It stays in place. It's very easy to get to. It's a very quick draw, and I'm good to go. All right, so I use this a ton. Now, do I carry with one in the chamber with this? I don't, okay, because I don't have a hard-sided holster. Um, if I'm having to, you know, any of this, like, the, I, I just do not carry chambered like this. You can get some trigger guards that go in this so that you can carry uh, with one in the chamber. I prefer not to do that. Um, this is already gonna take me a second anyways. So I, this is how I carry um, when I'm in a dress and it is super easy and simple. Okay, so to wrap this up, a couple of things. You may have noticed I don't carry appendix. Um, I said in my last video that I wasn't gonna get into this and then immediately got into it anyway. But uh, to give you a little bit more detail, I don't wanna have to put space between me and attacker in order to get to my gun, right? Um, kinda like in my, my story from earlier. You know, some guy could be like up on me with full frontal contact and I can still access my gun if I carry my waistband if I need to. Um, you know, this is another reason I don't love the upper abdomen carry up in here, but I might choose to carry that way if I'm like in a huge crowd or I know um, that I'd have immediate backup if some like bad dude was up on me. It's just, you know, situational dependent, right? And clothing dependent too. Another thing is if you're pulling quickly, you think about this, your adrenaline is just a hot mess. You hit that trigger a little too fast, you're pointing that down at your pelvis. Um, your pelvis can hold like four to five liters of blood. So this is a bad place to have an accident. You know, another thing to consider is you have to pull your firearm and shoot and potentially kill a living thing, be it like a dog or Terrence a terrorist, whatever, you're still gonna need to reholster it like before the cops show up, okay? Do you wanna reholster towards your abdomen when your hands are shaking and you're possibly like, you know, you've got blood on yourself and you have those two poor little brain cells that are trying to work? Um, I don't know, it's not, a, not a way that I really wanna reholster in that moment. So lastly, it's not comfy in the car. Um, you know, I mean, I've got a short torso, so for some taller guys, this may be not that big of a deal, but um, I still like to carry it back here when I'm driving in the car and even just kind of tuck my shirt behind it so it's quickly accessible. Um, but you know, carrying in the car, this is just not very comfortable. So, okay, well, it's time to finish here. Number one, whatever you choose to do, depending on your circumstance, practice, okay? A good habit that I've tried to get into is doing just a few rounds of dry fire before I leave the house. So like a today is the day that I leave and that marks a moment in time and I have to use my firearm. I don't want that to be the first time that I've pulled that trigger in a while. So take a few minutes to dry fire in the clothes that you're leaving the house in, like safely, clear it, clear it, clear it, check it, clear it, clear it, okay? 
Um, so, so be careful about that. But you know, go ahead and put it on, pull it, dry fire, try it with just one hand, and see what you got. Okay. Um, too long, didn't read. Good, better, best. Good. Good is a crossbody or a hip pack. Better, smaller gun on your body. Best, bigger gun on body. Okay. Drop your questions in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe. Share with friends that this may be useful for. And we will see you next time. Stay safe and stay dangerous.